the drill, seven people, seven people. Tell them congratulations, congratulations. It's the last day in the month of June. It's the last day in the month of June. It's the last day in the second quarter. It's the last day in the first half of the year. It's the last day in the sixth month of the year. We give him praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. If you have done that, you can take your seat this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said it before, I'll say it again. And I'll take some few minutes and just show you some verses of scripture to help you build faith. That's really what it is. Just to build faith this morning is what we are going to try and do, talking about our God. There are many things to preach about in scripture, but I really get excited when I want to talk about God. This morning we are going to be talking about God. One specific dimension of God is what we are going to focus on this morning. Just to help us build faith. But I said before and I say again, the, the second half of the year will be accelerated harvest for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it will be accelerated harvest. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it will be better for you than the first half. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I, I, I met a family yesterday and the man was just telling me, it's like, it's a new beginning for us. It's a new beginning for us. I, I struggled a lot in the first half, but with this that just happened, God has shown me that the rest of the year is going to be better. And I'm saying to you, take that as prophecy. The rest of the year will be better for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have used as a title this morning the spirit of lordship. Mm. The spirit of lordship. Many times the Bible will say the spirit of the Lord. Yes. Whenever you see the spirit of the Lord all through the, all, all through the old covenant, the Bible is talking about the spirit of lordship. In the book of Isaiah chapter number 11, the Bible talks about what is now popularly called the seven spirits of God. Verse number two. The first one is the spirit of the Lord. He says the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of lordship shall rest upon him. What is the spirit of lordship? I will show you. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And you see Saul, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and you prophesy along with them. You see Gideon, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. You see Samson, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Bible kept on using that phrase throughout the old covenant. We'll look at two portions of scripture this morning. Focus, deep focus. We'll do a lot of reading. It's a story, so we'll read the story and, and just enjoy it. That is what I want us to do. You see, it will help you if you've never done so. If you don't, you can do it again. To do a study on the names of God. It will help your worship. It will help your worship. It will help your faith. When you do that study. Because God manifests in different dimensions. And these dimensions are captured in his names. Yes. So when you do, when you do that study, you see different dimensions and different manifestations of God. You will find some names that he didn't call himself. Not that they are wrong, but when he manifested in a certain way, People called him that name. And then it becomes one of the names that we call God. It was at the point when God provided for the sacrifice after raising Isaac from the dead that Abraham raised an altar 
and called that place Jehovah Jireh. It was Abraham. It was Abraham. It was Abraham that did that. So as God manifests himself to you, you can also call him the names that line up with what he has done. It was Moses that raised an altar in Exodus chapter number 17, verse number 15, after the defeat of Amalek. Moses raised an altar and said, and called that place Jehovah Nisi. The Lord our banner. So when you do such a study, it will help you. It will help you. So today we are focusing on one of the names of God. And I'll read the story to you from Genesis chapter number, Exodus chapter number 6. Very, very interesting story. Very interesting. Very interesting, the things that happened here. And we'll read another portion of scripture um, in the book of First Samuel. Those are the two portions we are going to focus on. Okay? Talking about the spirit of lordship, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of Jehovah. You will see it. I will show you from scripture just now. The spirit of Jehovah. When the Bible says the spirit of the Lord is the spirit of Jehovah. Particularly, we are focusing on that word Jehovah. Then the Lord said to Moses, Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 1. Now, to create context, this happened after the Lord, you know, picked Moses from the burning bush, all of those signs, and sent him to Pharaoh. And Moses went to Pharaoh and said, God has sent me to you to release my people. Let them go and worship me. And Pharaoh looked at Moses and laughed. You know why he laughed? In those days, superpowers, the, the kings of superpowers, they see themselves as gods. They equate themselves with God. How can you come and say God said you should release? Which God is that? I am Pharaoh. I am the God of the earth today. Everything I say is what is done. If I say kill, someone is killed. It's just a word. I don't even need to mean it seriously. Just, just a wish. If I just wish it, it happens. And you are coming to tell me that one God somewhere is telling me to release these people. He said to Moses, I think laziness is what is worrying them. Yes. They are lazy. That's why they have spare time to begin to contemplate going away. And he said, double their task. Don't give them materials to work with anymore. Let them go and source materials themselves. But they will still produce exactly the same quantity they are expected to produce. So we can deal with this idleness and this laziness that is becoming a problem. And the children of Israel, by Moses showing up to Pharaoh, ended up in a worse off situation than they were before God came. Before Moses came. The people cried unto God, what is happening? And Moses went to God and said, God, look at what you have done. This is worse for the people now since I went. And when it was done, God made this speech that we are about to read. Before we read this, let me quickly make, make a point here. What you are going to see is a battle of gods. That's what it is. The power behind Pharaoh thinking he's God is because of his gods too. Okay? Not many people work alone. Not many. In offices. Not many. Not many. Many Christians want to go into politics, which is good. Because it's one of the pillars that we must, it's one of the mountains that we must counter. But be ready because there are altars there. There are covenants. There are covenants. You can't go in there without an understanding of who you are. 
There is nothing more you need to do. The sacrifice has been made. Jesus has done it. You mustn't bring a new sacrifice. But there just have to be an understanding of who you are because it is a battle of God's. I know of a cult in Abuja. Many people you know and see on TV, read about in the papers, they belong there. If I mention two names, you know them. It's a cult of homosexuality. That is the seal of that covenant. So when you show up, you want to contend with them in the natural, they are fighting in the spiritual. So Moses may not have fully understood the dimension of what God knew. This was a battle of God's. And in Exodus chapter number 6 from verse number 1, God made this speech. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will keep pointing out the Hebrew words so the meaning is clear, right? The Lord said to Moses, the Lord there is Elohim. It's Elohim. Right? Okay. So, Elohim said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Don't fall into God's trap, sir. <laughs> uh, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Jehovah. <laughs> I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. I, 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 think, I think I've gone ahead of you. You should be on verse number two now. The Lord spoke to Moses, I am Jehovah. English here says Lord. But Hebrew says, I am Jehovah. Tell someone he is Jehovah. Tell his second person he is Jehovah. Yeah. Look at what followed in verse number three. He said, I am Jehovah. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. Your Bible says God Almighty. The Hebrew says El Shaddai. See, God himself is introducing different dimensions of himself. <laughs> I have manifested myself to Abraham. I have manifested myself to Isaac. I have manifested myself to Jacob as El Shaddai. Okay? Look at the next thing God said. Go back, go back, go back, go back. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. He was saying that I never manifested my Jehovahness. That's what he was saying. The personality Jehovah, I have not manifested it before. I will show Pharaoh that I am Jehovah. The stage is set, sir. That's what has happened. The battle line is drawn. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, mortal, looked at the immortal, invisible God and said, I will pepper your people. That's what he was doing. And God said, I will show him that I am Jehovah. The dimension of myself that I'm about to show, I never showed it before. Never. I didn't show it to Abraham. That's what he was telling Moses. J Isaac. 
Jacob, now listen to me, right? Let me make a few comments. El Shaddai is, I don't want to use the word matana, right? But it's like the mother, it's, there is a something, because it means the big God with big breasts, right? So there is something, you know, understanding, maternal, he's long-suffering, he understands. Jehovah is not like that, sir. Jehovah doesn't take nonsense. Jehovah doesn't take nonsense, sir. That's what he was telling Moses. I have behaved nicely, supporting. I am Jehovah. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. I have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Cana, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am Jehovah. And after that, God began the famous switch of the seven I wills. What followed? What God declaring seven I wills. Now in his full nature as Jehovah, the Lord, the God, the supreme one. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing about Jehovah. Jehovah is about supremacy. Jehovah is, is, is about who is greatest. Jehovah is about who is the highest. Jehovah is, is about whose words come to pass. Jehovah is about... Is about the one that reports to no one, takes excuse from no one, bows to no one, surrenders to no one. That is Jehovah, the about supremacy. And he said, we can't read the old portion, but I brought out the seven. He said, I will bring you out. Number one. Number two, I'll rescue you from bondage. Number three, I'll redeem you. Number four, I'll take you as my people. I'll, I will be your God. I'll bring you into the land. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I'm now on verse number eight, right? When you finish verse number eight, how did it end? Can you put it for me quickly? Quick, 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 quickly. The last promise, the seventh I will, verse number eight. The seventh I will says, I have it, but I need you to see it. That's what I'm trying to wait for because I have it all sitting there. Just like Pastor Gabriel said, I always copy and paste all my scriptures, okay? After the last, I will give it to you as a heritage. He signed it off again by saying, I am Jehovah. Time will fail me to tell you, show you in details what began to happen. But you know the story. What followed were ten plagues. And God said, me, eh? I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Me. Myself, I will harden his heart. So that I can prepare him very well. And let the world know that there is only one whose words come to pass. And when you study very well, each of the ten plagues was judgment over every other god in Egypt. He had a multitude of gods that he worshipped. And God picked each one of them and messed them up. He started with Hapis, the god of the Nile. The Nile was a shrine. There are people that worship there. So the first thing he did was to turn the Nile to blood. They have what they call the fly god. They have a god who 
his, his face is, is the form of a frog that he worship. He gave them frogs. Every single one, what was he doing? He was judging their gods. Interesting how this thing started, right? When Moses goes and does something, the Egyptians will do it. The, the Egyptian magicians will do the same. <laughs> They'll do the same now. The guy came, brought rod, cast it, turned it to his side. They were all laughing. Rod into, this is what we play with. It's Ludo to us. <laughs> what is there? You cast what it on. Come on there, come on there. They are through their rods. And, eh, eh, everything turned to snakes too. This is Ludo. Movement, and let's go. <laughs> but guess what? Moses' serpent swallowed all of them. Lift up your hands and say, There's no God like Jehovah. There's none. There's none. The third plague is an interesting one. Because when Moses did it, the people tried. The magicians tried. After trying and trying and trying and trying, they responded in Exodus chapter number 8, verse number 19 to say, this is the finger of God, sir. It's beyond us. <laughs> we can't do this. And he continued when he was about to do the seventh one. Exodus chapter number 9, verse number 14. He said, I will send all my place to your very heart and on your servants and on your people that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Supremacy. And at the end of the day, the last plague, the death of the firstborn, was judgment on Isis. They had a god called Isis, the protector of children. And God judged them, judged that god. And they, man and beast, and there was a loud cry, a loud cry in Egypt. And Pharaoh said, you can go. This is too much. Something to note, which I'm sure you know, is that while all this was going on, the children of Israel were immune. Yes. And God kept on saying that the people may know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Don't lower your thinking to the point where you see yourself as ordinary and expect to suffer what everybody is suffering. You are not like them. You are not a common man. You mustn't suffer because the economy is not the way it should be. You mustn't suffer because of the exchange rate of the Naira. The Lord makes a distinction. It starts with your belief. It starts with your, your, where you set your mind. It starts with you removing the cap. Because every such thing creates an opportunity. And those who know it will benefit. Let me show you quickly another portion of scripture. First Samuel chapter number four. Very sad chapter. Very sad. Very sad. When you read first Sam, very sad. Very sad. Many things happened there that were not nice. But the most severe one was the Israelites were defeated. And the Philistines captured the Ark of God. They captured the Ark of the Covenant. Be 
before that happened. Eli lost both of his sons. Hopefully, and Phineas, they died in that battle. And after serving Israel for 40 years, at the age of 98, Eli himself died in that chapter. And the news was brought to him. The Bible says he fell backwards and broke his neck. It was very sad. There was sorrow in Israel. And in verse 21 of 1 Samuel 4, a woman who was pregnant, Phineas' wife who was pregnant with a child, captured it. For she named the child Ichabod, saying the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God has been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband, all of them dead. And she said the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. That's verse number 22 that I just finished reading. This set the stage for 1 Samuel chapter number 5. With defeat, death of the prophet sons. The Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant. And they didn't know where else to keep the Ark of God. They took it to their shrine. <laughs> they took it to where? I need to hear. They took it to where? In other words, he is one of the gods. And they put the Ark of the Covenant beside Dagon, their God. In other words, they are all of the same rank. Ha ha ha. Leko Santa Frasapata. I can hear God looking down from heaven and saying, I am Jehovah. <laughs> I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. Somebody say, He is Jehovah. Somebody say louder, He is Jehovah. Somebody say louder, He is Jehovah. And God began the judgment of the Philistines. And their gods, particularly. You see, you need to know it's a battle of gods, folks. It's a battle of gods. It's a battle of gods, always. It's a battle of gods. It's a battle of gods. It's a battle of gods. You are working hard for promotion. Some guy has a pot somewhere, he's putting water. Others have bees tied around their waist with calories that you don't see. It's a battle of gods. It's a battle of gods, always. It's a battle of gods. A member of the church I used to worship in Abuja then who joined politics, he co 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 competed for, uh, I mean, co contesting for the House of Rep, came back and said, Pastor, I won't do it again. No. He told that pastor, then I won't, I won't do it again. I won't do it again. Why? He traveled. For a political meeting. And they put a coffin down that everybody should swear and cross over it. Swearing by Ahmad Yoha. He, for, <laughs> for political position. <laughs> to serve my country. He said I won't. He left. He said I won't do it again. He left politics. He said I won't do it again. The Philistines took the Ark of God. I'm on verse number one and chapter number five. The Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. <laughs> and when the people of Ashdod rose early in the next morning, there was Dagon falling on his face to the earth before the Ark of God. Power past power, sir. 
every authority knows the one that is senior to it. First, their God started to worship. Ah, Jehovah, sir. Jehovah, sir. Jehovah, sir. Jehovah, sir. Jehovah, sir. <laughs> Jehovah, sir. Please, oh, you, they, they should not have brought you here, sir. And he bowed down in worship. The people didn't know. They thought he fell by mistake. Do you know what they did? They put him back in position. May you not serve a God that needs your help. <laughs> yes, yes. A God that needs your help to stand. May you not serve that God, sir. May you not serve that God. Abishop with Asa used to say, what you try to lean on and he, he couldn't support you. When he falls upon you, he will not kill you. He won't kill you, sir. He won't kill you. So they carried it up. Look at what happened next. So they took Dagon and set it in his place again. And when they rose early the next morning, there was Dagon falling on his face, not only falling on his face before the ark of the Lord, the head of Dagon and both his arms, they were broken of their threshold. Only his torso was left. I wish Dagon could tell them what he went through in the night. <laughs> I wish he could tell them <laughs> that this was a battle of gods. It was a battle of gods. It was a battle of gods. <laughs> and when you read on, just keep that bit skip because I, I need to bring it to its close now. Read from verse number six. First Samuel chapter number five from verse number six. The hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod. He ravaged them and struck them with tumors, both Ashdod and his territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how he was, they said, the ark of God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is harsh towards us and towards our God. <laughs> I like that part. He's not only dealing with us, he's dealing with our God too. His hand is harsh. He's harsh. He's heavy. Listen to me well. They can plot whatever they like. You are not the one they are fighting, sir. Yes. That's why I worry when people are running panicky, blah, 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 blah. We don't pretend as if we don't know that those powers exist. We only just know that they're inferior. <laughs> I remember this. I, I, I lived in that house, so I saw it. This was in Navy Barracks then. I was saying, with my sister, I just got into Lagos. Okay, no, no, I had not gotten a job then. I just came for holiday. And she had a friend who said they always used to come and beat her in the night. My sister beat her in the night. Come, 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 come and sleep here. I'm telling you, I was in that house. The friend slept there. Nothing happened, nothing. Nothing. Nothing happened. They will fail. We know they exist, but they will fail. Because God even promised us that they will gather. He said they shall surely gather. It's a promise, sir. They shall surely gather. God said so. They will gather. So we know they exist. We know they are planning. We know they are plotting. We know they are meeting in the night. We know they are doing covenants. They will surely gather. But because it's not by me, they will fall together. They will come as one. They will scatter as seven. When they call your name and fire answer, they will scatter at seven. It is a battle of gods. After that declaration, his hand is harsh towards us and to dig on as God. They sent and gathered to themselves all the laws of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of God? <laughs> what shall we do? We've carried trouble. 
What shall we do with this trouble? <laughs> and they answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be carried away to Gath. So they carried the ark of God of Israel away. So it was, after they had carried it away, that the hand of the Lord was against the city. This time it was Gath now. It was against the city with a very great destruction. And it struck the men of the city, both small and great. And tumors broke out on all of them. Therefore, they sent the ark of God to Ekron. So it was, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought the ark of God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. They sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it go back to his own place so that it does not kill us and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were stricken with the tumors and the cry of the city was loud and went up to heaven. Why am I saying all of this? This God is your God. Amen. The God we are reading about is your God. You are not a Philistine. We of the Gentiles have been brought in with our connection to Jesus. He's our God. He is not only your God, He's your Father. This was one thing that the coming of Jesus did. So it is commonly said that the Son of God became the Son of Man. So that the sons of men can become the Son of God. He first came to his own, they didn't believe. But the Bible says, as many as believe, they have now become the children of God. What am I saying? This force, this power is not against you, it's for you. This is what you work with. This is what you have access to. This is what you live by. So when God declares a word and says it's harvest time, you need to know the one that is speaking. When he says to you that you are walking into a better month in July, you need to know the one that is speaking, sir. When he says to you that the second half will be better, brighter days, we prophesied in dance earlier, you need to know the one that is speaking. He doesn't need to consult with anyone. He reports to no one. He takes orders from no one. It takes instructions from no one. I am Jehovah, he says. And the spirit of Jehovah, if you read through the old covenant, was at work in the lives of the people. We saw them. And I mentioned some of them to you. Saul, Gideon, Samson. That same spirit is at work in us. Because he is the same. The same. The same power, the same potency. What am I saying to you as I'm done? Don't be afraid of anyone. Or any situation. Don't be. There is God. There is God. Hold on. Hold on. There is God. There is God. There are people who take up places. I was talking to a sister in church. She was sharing a story with me of some guy in their office. Who, and I said, hey, this guy is pitching himself against God. That's what he's doing. Let God handle him. 
It's the easiest prayer to pray, I tell you. Just go to God and say, Lord, trying to, he's trying to say that he's my God. Show him that he's not. That's all. Show him that he's not. I won't sign. I won't approve. You will not get this. <laughs> eh. Eh. I know that Jehovah is, is showing up, right? You are now my God. You are now my God? Because you have authority to sign a certain letter, they call promotion letter. You think my future is now in your hand? I will rise above it. I will rise above you and you'll be alive to witness it. Because when he prepares a table, it is before. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's what he does. Because he's Jehovah. Bow down your heads. Bow down your heads. Bow down your heads. Bow down your heads. We will take a song or two of worship unto Jehovah. I would allow New Wine to choose one or two songs of worship that fits the moment. But I want to be sure that we are worshiping as one, 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 all in the covenant. So if there's anyone here who is not yet in the covenant, we're going to give you the opportunity. Don't lose it, please. I beg you. Connect to this God and this power today. Because once you make that connection, you are an alien, unfortunately. Not by what you've done, but by being born into the sin of our first father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Raise up your head for a moment and look at me. You walk around in confidence, knowing that Jehovah is for you. Jehovah is on your side. The power of Jehovah is in you. Because you made a dedication, a commitment to Jesus at some point. Can you put your hand? You know that Jehovah is your God. His for you is not against you. His force is not against you. His force is for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good place to be. And it's good knowledge to have. You can put down the hands. You can put it down. But if you're here, you couldn't put up your hand the first time. Because you know, in your heart, it's not about how good or bad you are, but you know, because you've not yet made a commitment to Jesus at any time. I'd like to pray with you now and initiate you so we can worship together as one. Can you put up your hand now? You want to connect with Jesus? You want to connect with Jesus? I'm looking around anyone that wants to connect with Jesus at this time because I need us to worship together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I can't see any hands. Rise up on your feet. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Let's take just one song of worship because of time unto Jehovah. You see, I need you to focus. Really focus. Okay? We've seen from the word of God who he is, how he behaves. Let's, let's truly worship him. Okay? Forget about everything. Forget about challenge. Forget about threats. Forget about deadlines. Forget about bills. Just for one moment. Worship this God. Worship this God. You and will lead us. Thank you, Father.
Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands, please. Everyone upstanding, unless it's impossible, but please just, just, just stand up and lift up your hands in worship. At this time, just lift up your hands in worship unto Jehovah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we call you Jehovah. We call you the Lord. We call you the Master. We call you the Almighty One. We ask that you answer your name, Lord, in our lives. Your children need you. There are people here struggling with deadlines. There are people pursuing approvals. There are people believing for the salvation of souls, of their families, of people in their communities. There are things that only God can do. There are things that only Jehovah can do, Lord. Have your way, Jehovah. Glorify your name. You are the Lord. We give you praise. 
we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise we thank you father we worship you we worship spirit of god glory to your name thank you father thank you father hallelujah to your name and everyone said amen jam your hands together jam your hands together in praise of jehovah in praise of jehovah the lord the god the mighty one thank you father hallelujah to your name in jesus name we pray